assessment, um, well, the bold, assess the bold assessment is um, we lost. They scored more points than us. Uh, they won more moments than us in the game. And we didn't put them under enough pressure for 80 minutes. And we put ourselves under pressure at times. Uh, and obviously France put us un under pressure, especially when they, they got a uh, playing of turnover ball in particular. There were a number of positives. I uh, thought our scrum was, was very strong against arguably one of the best scrummaging teams in the world. Our mall defence was good too. Um, we just need to trust that a little bit more because we did give away a couple of penalties in that area. And the effort the players put in was, was huge right throughout the 80 minutes. You had the spell when you got to within two points. There was a chance there to, to take the lead. But then you've got to try either side of half time. How hard was that psychologically for, for the players? I can imagine it was, it was tough for them, um, in particular the try after half time. It was disappointing not to have gone ahead when we had a couple of opportunities before half time, and then even more disappointing or frustrating that we concede uh, from a, a line out and a, on the halfway line in the 39th minute to. To concede in seven points, but the the belief was there. Uh, the learning from that first half was certainly there and discussed a lot at half time. And if I remember, the the French try came from attack around the twenty two uh, that we had the ball, so it's you could class it as a breakaway try. Um, but that must have been a blow for for the players on the field. There's been a lot of enforced change, particularly in the pack, with, with injuries. Hamish Watson being ruled out with coronavirus. Is, is that the changes, the, the depth you've had to go into with your squad there, is that in any way a, a mitigating factor to, to this result? No, no, because Nick Haining and Rory Darge, uh, who obviously replaced Hamish uh, with Rory going to seven and Nick uh, coming into the team, um, were very good. Uh, and the, the team showed their adaptability in that first half, playing, playing some really good rugby at times. Thank you. If we can move on to the written section now, please. Greg, it's obviously hard to appreciate the quality of the French when you're up against them directly. Having said that, just how good is this French team? Is it the best that you've come up against as a coach? Yes, it's a, it's a similar team that we came up against the last few years. So we we know the, their strengths. They they have got a big pack. They can put you under pressure. But I did feel we um we handled that well today. I felt we were getting a nudge in, in some of our scrums. Uh, we've got a few penalties ourselves in the twenty two when we we mauled against them. But it's their ability to turn good ball into tries. Uh, and good ball can come from, from scrums, they look dangerous off their, their scrum attack out wide and it can come from opposition turnovers, like that's the best two sources of possession you, you can get, uh, counter attack ball from kicks is also good but I think they, they showed how what a good team they are, uh, their back line, their back line is strong, scrum half obviously is a very good player and gets them on in good lines. But I think the the thing that stands out is their the front five, their ability to carry and keep the ball alive, um, and they were the very clinical close to the try line of of not just going down to a rack or even into touch, but um, getting an offload to someone else. Stuart expressed the urge to play Italy tomorrow, which is understandable. But I guess you'd rather have a bit of time to to think over what's happened and prepare for Italy. Do you, will you need a really thorough? post-mortem on this one or is it pretty obvious what you need to improve on? Yeah, well I think we'd all probably want to play France again tomorrow. I think that's the game that's most relevant to what you learn and get another opportunity at putting things right. Italy will be a different game, a different opponent. We'll have a different team, uh, I'd imagine, just the way these things go with, with who's available for us in, in two weeks' time. And we'll have a different focus on how we get our best game out. But yeah, the, when you've got a two-week gap, in the Six Nations like we've had the last two games and it's on the back of a defeat, you you feel very frustrated that you can't get back out there and, and show who, who we are as a team for 80 minutes.
Thank you. Very good. Great. Can I just check, um, Chris Harris didn't come back out the second half. Was that just a, a, a change or was Chris carrying an injury? Like an injury? He, uh, so he had an HIA during half time, which he failed. So um, he got a blow and, uh, and a tackle just before half time. So that's a credit to, to one of his teammates who had uh, notified um, us as medics that he, he, wasn't, he wasn't himself at yes. half time and then he, he failed the HIA. Michael, can we put a daily embargo in any of the stuff coming up? Yeah, we'll take one, we'll take one last question and then we'll move on to a Monday section if you want, yeah? Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, Gregor, can I ask a question for the French press? Of course. Um, you, you suffered a lot of counter attacks today. What makes France so, so dangerous in that situation when you lose the ball? Well, I think it's uh, the French rugby, uh, massive tradition of French rugby is, is an unstructured situation. That's where they, they flourish and thrive. I think probably going back to Pierre Vilpra's methods of coaching and teams like Toulouse and, and others in, in France, the, the players just react to space and different defensive pictures that they get. They do it really well. And it, it is the best ball you can get, turnover ball. So... The, the French are probably up there with the All Blacks at being the best at exploiting that that turnover ball. I feel that the um, the front five really adds to it as well. So it's not just relying on the backs or back row to, to make the most of that ball. If you've got a front five that can pass, support, make breaks themselves, and you've got a real 15 that can, can attack. Thank 